a weight for the wind? We knew the wind had motion. It was not until the 16th century that our scientists were able to calculate that due to the gravitational attraction of the Earth upon the molecules in the atmosphere, there actually was a weight to the atmospheric gases. We have 14.7 pounds per square inch of atmospheric gas weight at sea level. But the Bible anticipated this all along. Well, let's go beyond that. In Job 38, this book right here, verses 12 and 14, I want to read to you the statement. Have you commanded God speaking to, to Job? Job was a great guy, but he wasn't perfect. He needed to be humbled, uh, that we, and we all do, in order to realize his absolute need of the Creator and his daysman Redeemer, who is his Messiah, Jesus Christ. Then God was speaking, and he said, Have you commanded the morning since your days? Job, you didn't design this. I did, he said. The day spring... And have you caused the day spring, that is the dawn, to know his place? The earth is turned as a clay to the seal. Now, wait a minute. That's the rotation of planet earth. And it actually stated in Genesis chapter 1, where in the evening and the morning were the first day. During that first week, we have the rotation inferred. Then we have it stated in the book of Job. The rotation inferred is that evening and morning, in a course of hours, that would mean that in relationship to the sun, the earth had to move and had to rotate. The rotation of the earth was not known until recent scientific investigation, but the book of Job declared it all along. But there is more. In Job 38, 16, it refers to the springs of the sea. And it refers to them in deep areas where no ancient man was able to penetrate. There are no springs of the sea adjacent to the landmass. These are in the deep recesses, the abysmal masses. And in those areas, it's been recently found that there are warm, superheated thermal vents spewing up nutrient-rich waters pristine waters, uncontaminated by us, as a renewing supply designed by the Creator. Now, Job didn't know about these. He was not able to submerge in a diving bell. None of his colleagues knew about this, but God did again. We're talking about Job, and this could be said of anyone and all of these books together, but we're concentrating for the moment on Job. In fact, it was Sir Isaac Newton who did some original research. And uh, he was joined later by colleagues who verified. They found that white light has seven colors. In Job 38, 24, God asked the question to Job, by which way is the light parted? Job had no optical instruments to observe. The light coming from the sun or reflected from the moon. And how could it be parted? It was all one white light. It took Sir Isaac Newton, the father of modern science, and his colleagues in subsequent years and generations to realize that with a prism, light is separated, is parted, and then can be returned back by a prism to white light. We have incredible evidence for the scientific viability. Then let me list the final one which is one of my very favorites. This book of Job, I could, just, I could just hug it. I could just embrace it. My life has been changed because of what Job chapter 40, verses 15 through 24 said. You and I have known each other for long decades. Half a lifetime. 31 years. 31 years. Well, that's half your life, but <laughs> <laughs> not quite half my life, but half a lifetime of yours. In those 31 years, it's been a beautiful relationship. And the course of my life took a new direction. When I went to Glen Rose, Texas, completing the master's degree and directed an original excavation, 
After removing layers of limestone, following a trail of dinosaur footprints in Cretaceous rock, my colleagues and I uncovered a series of human footprints. Man and dinosaur living contemporaneously, that blew my mind because at that time I did not embrace recent creation. I embraced the gap theory and, and its full system. I was taught that in college and subsequent research. But the book of Job had said it all along. Behemoth is described as the dinosaur. Mm -hmm. Behold now, behemoth which I made with thee, Job chapter 40 verse 15 states, he eateth grass as an ox. That changed the course of my life. And subsequent to that, millions of people have learned the truth of creation from this work. Now we go back to the book of Job. Not only do we find the forces of gravity and gravitational weight and uh, rotation of the earth, not only do we find the beautiful statement of man and dinosaurs living contemporaneously, but Job was speaking with God, and he said, I need a daysman. I need someone to represent me before God, for I am unholy, and God, you're holy. Now, that brings us to Jesus Christ. He is the daysman. He's the representative. Would you let him represent you right now? Just pray this simple prayer with me. Just pray it from your heart. Dear God, I'm sinful. You're holy. I need someone like Jesus. In fact, I need Jesus to represent me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Cover me with your blood. Save me forever. Represent me before God, and I'll stand righteous because of you. Welcome home. in the 21st century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.